Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, some of the functionality of TrackIR and how I've set it up um, for DCS A10. Um, the same principle applies whatever uh, profile you're setting it up for so I think it would be useful um, for anybody who wants to uh, understand the fine-tuning of TrackIR. I'm focusing on the software uh, version 5.1 and the hardware version 5 and I'm also using the track IR Pro Clip. Your mileage will be different depending on what versions you've got but most of the principles are the same. Uh, it is completely different um, from the version 4 of the software and I would recommend anybody to um, if, they, if their hardware supports it to update to the latest version of the software. So this is the opening screen you get when um, you've um, switched on a profile and the software should select the correct profile from the game automatically. Um, however for this uh, version I've um, selected the profile by choosing the uh, exclusive uh, button here and this is uh, handy to note that if you have a problem with uh, the software recognizing your game you can select a particular profile by selecting it in that um, right hand side left hand side panel there and clicking on the exclusive button so on the right hand side panel here we've got a display and uh, we've got uh, a number of um, different panels that we can look at but the first one we've gonna gonna look at is the uh, camera view and this is very important to make sure that the camera is set up correctly and remember we've in with the pro clip we've got three little sensors you can see the lights there in the image below and it's important that they're centered on the screen on the grid in order to get the um the maximum sensitivity and accuracy from the camera so it might take a little bit of adjustment of the of the camera on your monitor wherever it sits uh, to bring that um image into the center of the screen and uh, once it's in, once it's there, uh, you shouldn't really need any further adjustment. There will be slight movements of your head as you move around the seat, but this is going to be compensated for by the the quick and often use of the centering button. For DCSA 10, I've chosen the um, centering buttons uh, as being the. Just let me find it here. The centering button is the number pad minus and the pause button which is something that you will also use as the um, keypad plus button. And I use these because they are used for the, the uh, throttle in DCSA 10 and it's very unlikely that you're going to be using the keyed strokes to manage your throttle with uh, DCS. So let's go back to our profile page and just uh, scroll that out of the way a little bit we don't need that for the moment <coughs> and we can see a, a profile on the left hand side here and we've got our camera view on the right so we're going to change our camera view to something that's a bit more useful to us by clicking on the 3D view and then also clicking on the rear so essentially we're looking at the view as we would if we were, we were behind person sitting in the chair and this gives us a good representation of uh, how uh, the head is going to move. There's two heads here and I just moved the uh, real head back and we can see uh, that's the solid head and the wireframe head is the uh, virtual head so that's the the wireframe is the movement that's going to take place within the cockpit and I'll stress the importance of having a recentering button on your HOTAS and something that you will be hitting and using very often. The reason is because there's generally going to be an acceleration of the um, of the head movement in the cockpit relative to your head movement because you're going to be moving your head left and right maybe 40 degrees to the left and right and maybe 30 degrees up and down and you're going to require the head to move in some cases through 180 degrees so you can see that the sensitivity is going to be exaggerated and any movement or shift from the center position is going to be accentuated by that now some people like to go for having a dead zone so in other words there's a position uh, it, within the center where head movements don't have any impact real head movements don't have any impact on the virtual head but I choose not to uh, use that approach 
as it still requires you to be within that uh, center zone and nothing happens and it also um it also takes up a uh, valuable um space which could be used for making uh, movements you'll find I, th I believe that if you've set it up this way without dead spaces after a very short time it will feel more natural to you so on the right hand side here we can see uh, the position of the virtual head which is the head within the cockpit and um, so we can see as we move our head that these images move uh, correspondingly the most important thing uh, to uh, to note here is the extreme movements of your head you shouldn't um, when you're setting up the profile make sure that your head only moves to the edge of the screen and you need to map the virtual head movement to be able to move as much as you would need um, relative to that so uh, the the head movement that I'm getting here from left to right is approximately 40 degrees and in DCSA 10 we kind of want somewhere around uh, between 150 maybe and 180 degrees so we want to be able to look back over our shoulder or in some cases maybe completely backwards so on this left hand side here we're going to look at the, um, the, the profile of the individual axis and in this case you can see even though I move my head around the place the virtual head is only moving left and right and that's because I've got all these um, all these axis indicators switched off so let's focus on the the yaw axis for the moment and the rest of them will follow through pretty much the same way so if we look I'm gonna move my head left uh, to the extreme of the screen and we can see the the angle is about 20 degrees there and I'm gonna move it to the right and it's around 20 degrees as well so a 40 degree movement is taking place as I move um, left and right uh, in the in relative to the screen and we can see that the head movement it's hard to see it when I have my head tilted over because I can't look back uh, we're talking about in game it's about 80 degrees on the left and it's even more that it's 90 degrees to the right so that's given us 180 degrees so our movement can look left or right. Now we need to improve on that because we need to be looking at maybe 280 degrees um, all told between left and right and the way we can change this is by adjusting the profile. Before I do that just let me explain very briefly what happens what the profile is looking like here. We can see that at the center position let's center it here you can see the little red spot is an indication of where our physical head is and the uh, indicator lines here are a representation of what kind of acceleration takes place to the virtual head at that point in on our real on our real head at that angle and the higher the steeper that slope is the faster the movement or the turning is going to take place so we can see here we want the movement to be very slow at the center uh, so that we have little so while we're in the pit and we're looking at the instruments we have very little uh, relative movements between our head and our virtual head so almost the same angle is taking place between the two however when we start getting to look out the windows to the left and the right because we need to be able to look further back then our screen allows us to turn our head we need to then start the acceleration so that's why you can see the acceleration takes place to the left and right by increasing and the position of those dots. Now if we are happy enough with that profile but we're still not getting the acceleration we want, in other words we're not getting the full angle of turn for of, on our virtual head, we can do this by increasing the curve. So I'm going to increase the curve a couple of points and I'm going to center again and I'm going to have a look at our movement now and I'm now looking at the edge of the screen which is 17, 18, 19 degrees and now you can see the virtual head now has gone through almost 180 degrees on that side and if we do the same on the left hand side I can't see, yeah, it's 20 degrees uh, we're probably a little bit less but the principle is is similar and it will det be determined by how close you are centered it doesn't have to be deadly accurate but it just has to give you a, bre a good enough range of movement to be able to make good use of the 3D um, or the 6 degrees of freedom virtual cockpit 
So I'm going to just move that back a little bit because I think I've gone too far for my own comfort. And uh, I'm going to move on then and just have a quick look at the other axes. The other axes uh, are, are tuned in in the same way, but I'm going to switch them all. I'm going to switch them back on one by one and just have a quick look at what they're like. I'm not going to make any changes to them. Remember this row here switches them on in the game and this drop down box here displays them in our in a profile view here. So we can see some of these um, uh, profiles are going to be asymmetric. In other words, yeah, it's not like a left and right, an up and down movement. It, we're going to need more movement, maybe up and less movement down. And that's what this one is. This is the pitch profile. And we can see it's the up and down movement. And we can see we have higher acceleration as we look up. And that's necessary because we're going to need to be able to strain our neck back in the cockpit where when we're looking down we only need to be able to look down at the instruments otherwise we start seeing our legs and uh, there's, there's nothing else to look at in the cockpit. So we move on to the next um, axis and we look at the roll. I'll switch the roll axis off. We can see the roll is a movement of our head and because it's left and right it's symmetrical and you can see we have a steep curve here so that uh, in the center we have very little um, rotation and we we rarely we we'll rarely need to tilt our head to the point where we're actually looking upside down in fact that that axis probably could be tuned back a little bit so that we didn't have so much um, so much uh, of a lateral movement there at the extremes the next one is the uh, x-axis and the x-axis uh, is basically shifting our shoulders to the left and the right and you can see once again it's a symmetrical movement and it's almost flat because we want to be able to the, the, the movements in the pit are probably similar to the movements that we would have um, in our looking at our screen because you, know, you can imagine your screen is quite wide so the, the, the movement of your shoulders in the cockpit would probably be not unlike the amount of movement that you can do on your seat in sitting in front of your computer and that's why it's almost a kind of um, a linear uh, relationship between the two and that's the way I have it done. The next one is the uh, y-axis and the y-axis I need to switch off the x-axis okay so the y-axis is the up and down movement and it's a it's a very asymmetric um, setup that I've got here and the reasons why is because this is kind of sitting yourself down in the chair to look down at the at the um, at the instruments and you can see we need to be able to do that looking down but we don't really need to be we don't need to do that uh, to look uh, to look up so much because otherwise we end up uh, looking away from the instruments uh, quite dramatically so it's a kind of it's it's a kind of a way of looking at the instruments more accurately and once again it's just the way I have this set up um, you might not like this and I'd suggest maybe play around with different options and the final axis then is the z-axis which is the zoom and uh, again it's an asymmetric axis and we can see um, it's a zoom to be able to zoom out quite sharply while we're in the pit and uh, we don't have to we don't want to we have, sorry we want to zoom in in other words we want to you know bring the objects in closer but we don't really want to uh, make the pit too small by moving back so far so that's why it's a, it's it's asymmetric so our rest position will always be from where we want to zoom out. Remember, we're using this zoom to look out, out through the cockpit. It's not the movement within the cockpit. It's the it's the zooming of the terrain, and that's the way um, this is set up. So that pretty much the that pretty much covers um, most of the uh, settings. There are some other things that you you may need to or want to um, mess around with. You know, the smoothing, uh, the speed. I've got mine at smoothing at ten, speed at one, um, and I suggest maybe um, if you find 
if you're new to track IR definitely um, make the smoothing very high so you have small movements because um, otherwise uh, you can feel a little bit queasy but after time you should be able to move this back obviously not so far that it becomes very tetchy and too sensitive but it needs to feel natural so that your movements within the cockpit need to be reflected um, outside so now we're going to take a look at the um, how this works and how this looks in the pit and we're going to look at the profile setup in uh, DCS A10. Okay, I'm now going to look at the uh, setup in DCS A10 and I'm going to choose the sim here from the aircraft list and the commands are going to be the access commands to start with and the most important one here is the zoom view because this is at the track IR Z axis so we've mapped the zoom view to the track IR Z axis so basically when my head moves out through the glass it zooms in on any targets in the field now some people do that differently they use the the uh, absolute longitudinal shift camera to do that and uh, then they'll use maybe some keys to, um, to zoom the outside view mm, I, I do it this way and um, it gives me good results. So I would normally have the absolute longitudinal shift camera view which is the one the movement in the pit um, mapped to my antenna knob but the pot is showing some spiking at the moment so I've got it mapped to two keys and uh, the keys if I have a look here um, I go down to uh, view cockpit and shift over to the keyboard we can see that the two keys that I've got now essentially I've got a, a, a center detent on the antenna knob so when I roll it uh, anti-clockwise it generates these key strokes and when I rotate it clockwise it generates these so it acts the same way by rotating it and bringing it back to center I zoom in uh, or, or I make a movement in the cockpit um, and forward and by moving it the other direction I move backward in the cockpit. So the combination of these um, allow me the uh, fluid movement that you see in some of the uh, demonstration videos. Okay so the next part uh, I'm gonna look at just very quickly um, is I'm gonna look at the view from inside the cockpit and um, this will just give an idea of how this all uh, pulls together. okay we're in the pit now uh, pl uh, please excuse the uh, poor quality of the video but I'm using uh, a screen uh, capture that's really not designed for 3D um, in order to just sh show the um, the track IR image on the bottom of the screen and the head movements so you can see I'm in the pit here and I'm just going to move my head to the left extreme here and to the right now it's a little bit uh, different because I'm only using a uh, 720 by 1280 resolution um, window in the middle of the screen uh, so I'm not actually looking to the extremes of the screen but you can get the idea uh, if I want to just stoop my head down here you can see I'm looking at the controls or if I want to lift up you can see that I don't I can't lift up very much no matter how far my head is done and that's the asymmetric profile I have in for the I think it's the Y axis. So uh, I've also got the movement key for moving up and down the pit uh, onto my rotary as I indicated. And this could be just two keys that you could assign on your HOTAS. But it doesn't need to be on your HOTAS because you need to be doing this without taking your hands off the throttle and stick. The other one, the other button you can see is the center button. You can see no matter where I am I can center it easily because as I said once you move in your seat it's hard to get in back into the exact same position so it's as easy it's an easier job just to um, make a, an adjustment or um, center, recenter. The other thing I like is if we zoom into something I can just again it's a whole task button I can uh, switch into pause mode and it allows me to do what I need um, with that screen and then I just switch back out of it again and I'm back into the screen view.
you can see it's probably a little bit of unnecessary rotation um, of that view um, and this could be a bit more fine tuning there so I hope this um, this helps uh, with understanding how to set up track IR and to get the best use, use out of it in DCHA 10 like I said the same principle of um, working with one axis at a time and fine tuning it for whatever um, game you want it for is probably um, a good way of doing it um, if you have a couple of monitors uh, like I have you can switch track IR and have it sitting in one monitor and then put your game into windowed mode try and make your windowed mode to fill the screen though because you get um, you get a different representation of your views if the image is not taking up the full uh, width and height of the screen okay thank you for watching